If only. Recording in progress. Okay. Uh, we're very, uh, very pleased that you've uh, offered to give the um, Brahman Diksha to these two aspiring personalities here and uh, hold the yagna here and you go. In inspiring, not aspiring, inspiring, inspiring. Inspiring, devotee. Inspiring. So we've got a few visitors here. We've got about 10 or 12 of us in the temple that have come for the uh, program today. How many? How many devotees? Today is the first day that it's opened up for Sydney people to come here. We don't have any Sydney people here right now, but uh, the influx will start here now. People are bursting to get out of Sydney, so we're having a weekend festival. So it's very nice to have the program yeah, here. Tom arrived there. Back to Tom. Back to Tom. Where are you? Hey. Is he, taking Brahm, is he taking Brahman initiation also? Looks like <laughs> Brahman initiation. Is that going on later? I'll do sutra initiation. <laughs> He's asking if you do sutra initiation. Taking go diksha. Go diksha. Go diksha. Go diksha. Go diksha. <laughs> If you, serve, if you serve the cows at New Gold Kula, you're going back to Godhead, whatever you've got. Well, hang on to that, Thomas uh, Maharaj. Talk to them with all your heart. They're so dear to the deities there and so dear to Prabhupada. Please you know, give your heart to their service. They're serving us, really. They're our lifeline, um, giving us an opportunity to wake up and reunite to reality so today then uh, what can we just establish the schedule before we kind of sort of start is it uh, russ seek and Nanda's produced suggested uh, convey your um suggestion to have some kirtan to begin with yeah and then you'll give a class give a little talk and then after that perform the yagna here we have who's our... doing the yagya please who's doing the yagya we Who's have our qualified hit, His Grace Chitarupa Prabhu. A Chintarupa or a Chitarupa? A Chintarupa? Chitarupa Gora Das. A Chintarupa Gora. Are you from Jayapataka Maharaj Disciple? Yes, Maharaj. I thought so. With a three three barreled name, you, you generally are Jayapataka Maharaj Disciple. Wonderful. Well, Thank you. The lucky Thank ones you for being one here. Thank you for rendering this service. Thank you, Kalia Krishna and all the devotees at Nugoku for facilitating this rare opportunity. I have been um, bereft of the opportunity to be with the devotees in Nugoku in Australia, New Zealand, and so on for two year, almost two years now, I think, almost coming up. And uh, we hope that this, this uh, situation will change, but let's see what Krishna has in store. Otherwise, whatever it may be, modern technology, be it what it may, at least it can be used in Krishna's service. So we'll do our best today to try to so associate with each other and help each other to come closer to our ultimate goal, our destiny in life. So, um, okay, so following what you said, I basically will follow up. We discussed with Rasikananda Prabhu. The only question mark is what time will I give the uh, official mantras to Toshan Krishna Prabhu and Bhakti Malamata? Have you got an idea? Sikananda was suggesting that after the yagna, can they have a private Zoom call with you? We don't really know what time that will be. Because, um, of course, I've got a schedule here. I've got to move on. Um, so... Um, Say if you start the class at um, uh, 20 so, past five and by 20 past six, our time. So okay. whatever time. Whatever let's, time say the yoga starts, let's say the yoga starts at 6.30 your time, just say. No, 5.30 our time. Oh, sorry, 6.30, yeah, 6.30, okay. But I don't know, you've got RT, you've got this and that. So if it starts at 6.15 or 6.30, how long will it take? 
How long is the argument then? Half an hour. So we need to start by about 20 past six. 6.20. Okay. We'll try 6.20. And then the argument, and then there'll be some circumambulation, and there'll be some chit-chat. And then there, I don't know what else you're going to do before we can set up a private Zoom. We can say maybe 7.15. 7.15. Well, 7.15. Yeah, we'll try for 7.15, okay? Is that okay? Yes, we'll That's try fine. for 7.15. You got that, Ronnie? Calculate our time. 7.15 Sydney time. Okay, we'll begin then with your permission and with the blessings of the deities there. Uh, dear. 7.15 is two hours from Bonanza. now. Right? Huh? Two, two hours from now. Is it? Anyway, I've got a super technological devotee with me who can calculate all these things. I don't need to worry about it. And Radha, uh, Mahabhadra, Hare Krishna. And uh, Radha Gopulananda are there. Are Radha Gopulananda there? Yeah, can, please. can we see them? Can we see the deities? Yeah. Right now. I don't know who your cameraman is, but who, uh, who's the cameraman? The cameraman is the same as every other man. Camera girl. Guy, Radha Gopulananda, hold this. Okay, there we go. Hold still. Radha Gopulananda Ki Jai. Gornitai Ki Jai. I guess Jagannath's there too. He's behind people's images here. There they are. Jagannath Baladev Sabhadra Ki Jai. Radha Gopulananda Ki Jai. Gornitai Ki Jai. Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Beautiful. Well, you could leave that on whilst we have Kirtan, if you oh. wish, I, whatever you desire. No more. The voters should sit down. The candidate should be ready for the yoga now. We can't really leave you there, Marge, because then we can't plug the television set in. I'm oh, sorry about that. Do whatever you need to put up um, with looking at you me. on television right now, Hindu movie or something you're going to watch, or what is on Quite television good. you need to watch? Uh, Okay, so uh, are the, the candidates should really sit down in position now as if the yogi is about to begin. And I don't know if Toshan can, but he should be ready for a, initiation. And it may have to, I don't know if it's yeah. freezing cold over there or what is it? I don't know. Uh, it's freezing cold. You can keep your, you know, socks. Okay. Huh? Otherwise, get your shutter on and uh, take off your overcoats and whatever you've got on. Well, you have to take the un is it is it po not possible to take off the, uh, the the jumper is it is that how it works yeah if it's not possible no, it's all right. uh, we can we can go back to the 1971 when the voters would sit there with t-shirts and socks <laughs> and you know whatever they got on okay there we go that's good so we're we'll start with the kirtan then I'm gonna do the um, the um, um, then we'll do the um, Abhishadiya. What's it? The uh, purification. Uh, my I can't remember losing my memory. Ashram. Or huh? Ashram no. and so on like that. Yeah. So if everyone can take their seats. Yeah. I hear peacocks. The peacocks are there. They're in Vindavan now. The eye of a bad. Namo Vishnu Padayam Vishnu Vistaya Uttalehi Srimate Vakti Vedam Paswami Iti Please join in with the kirtan, everybody. I I know I won't be able to hear you, but at least you can chant there. Namaste Sarasate Devi 
Where's my beat? Where's my garland? Where's my garland? Talia, where's my garland? <laughs> You've got your garland. <laughs> the priest had his garland. Where's mine? Um, have I got to put a face mask on? Is that how it works? Hare 
हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 ओम हरे ओम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे ಶ್ರೀಮಾಯಪೋಧಾಮ ಗಂಗಮಾಯಕಿ ಜಮುನಮಾಯಕಿ ತುಳಸಿ ದೇವಕಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಕಿ ಸಮವೇತ ಭಕ್ತ ಬಿಂದಕಿ ಲೋಚಿತನ್ಯ ಹರಿನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಕಿ ಬೃಹತ್ಮದಂಗಕಿ ಅಗೌರ ಪ್ರೇಮನಂದಿ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಟು ಬಿಟೀಸ್ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಟು ಬಿಟೀಸ್ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಟು ಬಿಟೀಸ್ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಆಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಂ ಓ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಾಪಾಟ್ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಬಿಡಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕನೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಾತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿರಾಟ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಓರ್ವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿ ನೈನ ವಿಶೇಷಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಮೇಸಿ 
Merci beaucoup. Hare Krishna. We'll bring some put a garland on this background here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need some work for Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Jai Prabhupada. Jai. All oh, glories to all the devotees of New Gokul. Yes. Can you put my clock here somewhere? My yes. standard clock. It might be fast. Set it to the right time. Just a quick question, Kaliya Krishna Prabhu. Um, do you have the mantra sheets and the Brahmin thread ready? Yes. Already. Okay. It's the correct time. Yeah, I hope you make sure you've got the, the updated Brahmin sheet. The, sometimes devotees have the, the one from like 10 years ago. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sure you've got it. The right one. <laughs> We're about okay. 10 years behind here, usually. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. So we'll begin then, with your permission. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Dear devotees, welcome today to this most auspicious occasion in this most auspicious uh, month of Damodar, Kartik, Mass, and uh, in this opportunity where we come closer to our parampara, closer to our ultimate destination, there are in our lives various initiations, which are generally accompanied by various samskaras, various meant to create inner consciousness in our heart, impressions which remain um, as a guideline, as an inspiration, as a reminder, incentive, and we hope as a, a dedication. We have, there are many in society from child, even in the womb, birth, um, and then so many others as a child grows through its life. And then, in generally speaking, there's the Vaha Yagya, marriage ceremony. There's all sorts of different um, kinds of initiation, or let's say, some scars which we undergo in our lifetime. Um, because human life is meant primarily for Omatata Brahma Jignas. It's meant for realization of the absolute truth. It's not meant simply to facilitate our conditional, whatever it is, our consciousness in this world or our karmas, etc. They go on, but that's not the goal of life. The goal of life is to become free from these entangling um, karmas and the illusion of false identity and attachments which we have in this world. So these samskaras and the various kinds of ceremonies which take place in a human culture, uh, Vedic culture, human culture, are all there for that ultimate goal. And today, um, Toshan Krishna Prabhu and Bhakti Mala, uh, Devi Dasi, uh, Mataji are um, taking another step in this, at least taking this opportunity to move forward on the ultimate progressive path of human form of life. Um, we've already, they've already undergone the um, connection, some bundle or known as usually as the Nam Diksha. Diksha, if we read, what does Diksha mean? Uh, of course, it can be analyzed in different ways. Generally, we just say initiation, but if we look a little deeper, um, Diksha is described by Jiva Goswami as the process by which one can awaken his transcendental knowledge and vanquish all reactions caused by sinful activity. And of course, we all know that our life in this world has been, we don't know how many eons, how many lifetimes we have been traveling in this material uh, a world, it countless lifetimes, and in the human form of life, accumulating various kinds of reactions, etc., etc. 
Um, a person expert in the study of the revealed scriptures knows this process as diksha. It's not just a ceremony. It the real essence of diksha. Sometimes it's understood. It means to enter within, impregnation. Just like, of course, in the marriage ceremony, there is, in, uh, excuse me, in married life, there is often this impregnation, and the result of that is the creation of a life. Um, at least that's the goal. Um, so the goal of diksha is not just to get a name or just to get a thread or just to you know become a ritualistic brahmin or something. The goal of life is to attain to the transcendental platform. In other words, second it's called second birth. The first birth is also uh, the physical birth from the parents. And that's also a birth, we could say. But the second birth is the real birth when we come to a spiritual understanding. So impregnation of transcendental knowledge, or we could say the process which awakens transcendental realization um, is given, or is this is the business of diksha, mantra diksha, nam diksha, and now today we're having mantra diksha. And we may question what is the need of mantra diksha? Generally speaking, in ISKCON, we say mantra diksha is for the, so that you can go on the altar. Right, Kalia? So we can go on the altar and fill the, fill the schedule. <laughs> and sometimes, Prabhupada said that's not really the goal. Um, it's an, it's, it's, it certainly is a, a, a purpose, you could say, of taking second initiation so that we can engage in this archana, this activity of deity worship. There's no doubt about that. It's very important. And other related services. Um, you can read more about that in Pancharatra Padeep, a very wonderful um, description or, uh, or explanation, you could say, of the process of devote deity worship and how it applies in ISKCON and how important it is. Or you can read also in Nectar of Devotion, the various um, chapters there describing the various, um, say, aspects of daily worship. Um, but either way, it's, uh, the real essence of this is to um, give us that extra um, impetus, maybe, but uh, and, and activities which help us, uh, responsibility activities which help us to progress towards pure devotional service. Um, so we also is questioned, for instance, if we read in the Majulila um, of the Chaitanya Charita and Rita in the 15th chapter, and ironically, it's verse 108. Um, there, um, uh, it states there, one does not have to undergo initiation or execute the activities required before initiation. One simply has to vibrate the holy name with his lips. Thus, even a man in the lowest class can be delivered. So this is a description here of the glories of the holy name. And Lord, this is Lord Chaitanya speaking um, to the residents of Kulina Gran, specifically Satyaraj Khan. And uh, he's describing the glories of the holy name as Kali Yuga, particularly, as you probably heard many times, there is only one way in the age of Kali, and that is through chanting the holy names. So we've received that already. This is known as Nam Diksha. We receive the holy name from a pure devotee of the Lord. And you've taken initiation in the Parampara discipline succession. Srila Prabhupada describes that the first initiation is the actual connection with the Parampara, particularly in Kali Yuga. So this verse spoken by Lord Chaitanya indicates this. The one doesn't need to undergo, and when he says undergo initiation, in the verse is his diksha, uh, mantra diksha. It's not referring to nam diksha. It's referring to mantra diksha. And it also refers, even if we're coming from any kind of, let's say, Unvedic background, which most of us are, nonetheless, by hearing the holy name, receiving the holy name from the parampara, from the pure source, and following the process of chanting the holy name properly, 
one can attain all perfection. There is no need for any other samskara. That activity alone is sufficient, even if we're coming from a very sinful or materialistic background. So what is the need of today? Well, if we read on in the purport, Srila Prabhupada to the verse 108 there, there are many quotes, you can read it yourself. It is says it may be a little difficult to follow, but uh, in some ways, because it's quoting, Prabhupada is quoting from various sources, but I'm not going to read them all. Um, and there are sources there, it says, without taking official initiation. Official initiation referring here to Brahman initiation. One cannot attain perfection. There are statements like this, um, which in normal terminology, in the Vedic terminology, you could say are very significant. But in this Kali Yuga, by the grace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has made this um, ultimate perfection of life easily accessible through the pure chanting of the holy name, offenseless chanting of the holy name. The problem is, is that we're not chanting offenselessly. And this is where the question mark, you could say, or the necessities start to, to become a little bit more realistic. Um, if we read in the Bhakti Sandarbha, there's a very nice statement there. Um, it's a famous quote. It's quoted many times by Srila Prabhupada. Bhakti Sandarbha is Kampaba Jiva Goswami, one of our six gurus. Gita Kanchanatam Yati Kasyam Rasa Vedana Dhatata Diksha Vedanina Dvijatvam Jayate Minam. By chemical manipulation, bell metal is turned into gold when touched by mercury. Similarly, when a person is properly initiated, he, he can acquire the qualities of a Brahmana. I will quote this a lot. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj actually um, revolutionary, you could say. Real revolutionary preacher. Now, the other aspect of, of this, uh, you could say, subject is the fact that this purpose of a movement is individuals, and our individual purpose is to become pure devotees. And then there's the movement's purpose, which is to spread Krishna consciousness and facilitate the individual becoming a pure devotee. So for that reason, um, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj introduced amongst his disciples, because most of his disciples were not coming from Brahmin backgrounds in India. Because in India, of course, you still have some caste system, be it whatever it is, but it's there and people take Brahmin initiation and so on and so forth. And, uh, but he introduced it in his movement, um, uh, not just because of daily worship, but for preaching, because people are just accustomed to accept or give respect to a Brahmin in India, and also to listen, accept what they say more likely than if you're not. It's changing, of course it's changing. But that was the principle, to establish that one who is a Vaishnava, is automatically a Brahmin. Our goal is not to become a Brahmin. Our goal is to become a Vaishnava, a servant of Vaishnava. Vaishnava, one who dedicated their lives in devotional service, which, although we may not be liberated in one sense, um, we're following the path of liberation. Liberated condition means that there's no question of, I need to serve, I need to do this is that the soul is actually in its constitutional position, automatically Jiva Srupai Nichar Krishna Das. There's nothing else to do. The soul's eternal nature is to serve the will of Krishna. And so this is all part of helping to come to that platform, which we'll see in a minute. Um, by properly being initiated, one rises, uh, one is connected to the Prampara, of course, but one is also considered to be a Brahmin, like when you have a million dollars, you automatically have a thousand dollars. So the goal is not to become a Brahmin, it's to become a Vaishnava. And yes, yes, the Bhaktir Bhagavad Kinchana when I to Savasata Saro, the one who is actually engaged as a Vaishnava in pure devotion, full devotional service in that situation, all the good qualities of the Brahmins, the demigods, develop, they appear. Whereas one who may be 
maybe they're very learned, they may be Brahminical, they may be whatever it may be in some sense, but if they're not a devotee of the Lord, if they're not a Vaishnav, what is the use of all those qualities? They have no value. Some people say they have no good qualities, but even if materially speaking, we can perceive good qualities in people, what's the use of those qualities if they're not used in the service of Krishna? Similarly, we may know how to do daily worship, we may chant mantras, we may be expert this and that, but if our mentality is for our own sense enjoyment, for our own recognition, etc., then what's the use of it? We have to do the cultivation of this our constitutional nature, as the eternal servants, Lord Chaitanya said, Naham vi pro nachanara piti napi vaishona shiva. Naham vani nachipi piti nova nastoya tir. Kintu projana kira paramananda ponamitanta. Gopi vata pada kamalam dasa dasa mudas. The verse, which especially those today who are taking this step forward, this responsibility of Brahman initiation. You may not be able to remember the verse at the moment, but study that verse. Understand this is Lord Chaitanya's mission and the, you could say, the effect, should be the effect of our different practices and devotional services, the different stages we go through, is to realize that we're not Brahmins, we're not Kshatriyas, we're not Vaishyas, Shudras, Brahmacharyas, Grihastas, Vanaprastas, or Sannyasis. We're the eternal servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. As you know, the maidservants, Krishna's maidservants, this is our eternal business to serve the servant of the servant, 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 to become humble. So it's not now I'm a Brahmin. No, I can, you listen to me, you're not a Brahmin. This is not the business of a Vaishnava. Vaishnava is by nature a servant of others, Prabhu's. Our business is to realize now this is a reminder not to establish ourselves in a, a designation as such. We may perform the activities of that designation in the service of Krishna, but it's not to think I am. We are the, our real identity is servant of the servant, 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 servant. A wonderful opportunity now to help others. It's like Prabhupada when I was in London in 19. 75, when Prabhupada one time, he came into the temple and I was chanting Japa in the middle of the afternoon, 4.15, and Prabhupada, Sri Prabhupada came into the temple unexpectedly, very rarely, and he didn't even have his servant with him. He had a devotee with him, but not his servant. Of course, everyone's a servant, but not his official servant. And he noticed that one of the guests in the temple was offering their obeisances with their feet towards the deity because Prabhupada came out the back of the temple and they offered their obeisance to Prabhupada with their head towards him. And Prabhupada called the Bajari and said, what are you doing? And the Bajari said, they're cleaning the dishes. And Prabhupada said, no, what are you doing? And they didn't know what to say. And Prabhupada said, you are the Bajari, you are the priest here, and you're not teaching the guests how to worship Krishna, how to offer their obeisances properly. It's not just a matter of doing ritualistic things is understanding our business is to be a part of fulfilling this mission of Lord Chaitanya to help people to go back to Godhead. There's a responsibility, it's nice. Bajari isn't one who just does things behind the curtain or does the RT or something. But you've got a great opportunity, they've got a great opportunity to whatever stage people are at, they're not gonna go on the altar until they're ready. You haven't performed what's going on. And the verse explains there's a word in this verse which we didn't read it, but it's called Puraschariya. Puraschariya means activities before initiation, which need to be undergone before we can take initiation, just like you've been doing. You've been chanting around, you're wearing tilak, uh, you know, all different sorts of things, performing some yogya sacrifices, and you've taken a name already, and you're worshiping the deity, maybe helping in the background or doing some service for the deities. These are the various Purusharyas of Pancha Samskaras, which go on before official second initiation. They go on. You're already doing those, but most people aren't. <laughs> They're not doing that. They're not ready for that. You've got to, we've got to become purified, in a sense, to, 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 to take this next step. Prabhupada says that. Um, I'm going to read that in a little bit in a few minutes. 
Anyway, the prayer report goes on. Um, and I'm going to have to uh, jump forward a little bit. So Prabhupada writes here, due to the necessity of these activities, poor, poor shire, these activities before initiation, um, uh, we do not immediately initiate disciples of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. For six months, a candidate for initiation must first attend RTN classes in the Shastra. Now, of course, you are living outside the temple. Dosha and Krishna, I've known. We met in, I think, in 1994 or something. I don't know, a long time ago in, in Auckland. And uh, Toshin was living in the temple in those days. And he was very busily engaged in Food for Life and various other activities there in my, New Varshan in Auckland. And so that's a long time ago. That's, I don't know, 26 years ago or something, is it? Is that right? 26, 27, 27 years ago. So engaged in devotional service for probably most of his life. And I didn't meet Bhakti Mala till some years ago, either in New Gokul or in Bhakti Tree. I don't know where it was. But wherever it was, from a few years ago. Um, but Toshan, a long, long time. So he'd been performing these devotional practices for a long, long time. You have officially taken Brahman initiation, we took first initiation in the Parampara. And so we've been doing all these things. Um, and not only that, you see, when we, 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 we receive normally initiation, one receives one's um, bhajan, particular specific directions, but we've, we've already received the general ones, we already see specific ones. In this age of Kali, the whole situation is different. That Lord Chaitanya said, chant the holy names. So we get everyone to chant. And then when you're chanting, you become purified through chanting, you follow the regulated principles. And we do with these others without even our knowledge when he's engaged in these various um, samskara, these various activities, these push push char, these five preliminary activities of, ta of taking a name, that's where we see ourselves as servants, das, and then you put you wear the attire of the Vaishnava, tilak, maybe the neck beads various things like that, and you chant the name, take a new name also, changing of name has taken place, and then assisting in, in the, the deity worship is going on, and various uh, austerities, tapas, they're in the form of following these regulated principles. It's already going on without our knowledge. So in this way, Prabhupada says here, after six months of candidate, first of all, attending classes, you may be living outside, you may not be able to attend classes, maybe online, or whenever you can, but reading Prabhupada's books should go on um, and following the regulated principles. And whenever we can, we associate with devotees favorably and try to minimize unnecessary association with those who are not in devotional service. We have to associate because of our work or our family or whatever it is, but not unnecessary and not in the sense of trying to um, enter into the kind of association we are indulging in the sense gratification of those around us. When one is actually advanced in the Purush Charavidi, he is recommended by the local temple president for initiation. First initiation. It is not that anyone can be suddenly initiated without meeting the requirements. This is Papa's words here. When one is further advanced by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra 16 rounds daily, following the regulated principles and attending classes, he receives the sacred thread for medical recognition after the second six months. The Toshan six months is a long time, uh, <laughs> but it's not necessarily six months or six years. It is, it is not. But that was like what it was like pretty much during Prabhupada's time. It was like six months of following the principles and associating with bodies and chanting. And after another six, taking first initiation, then after that, six months or so, usually. That's not always the case. Um, we find in, in, in the Hari Bhakti Velastra, Sanatana Goswami recommends one year for initiation. But whatever it is, and the preaching mission, the Acharyas established what is effective to, to achieve the ultimate goal, and not deviating from scripture in any way, but understand the essential purpose of the scripture 
and how it can be achieved. So like that. And this Purushchari, which we're doing, following the principles, chanting Japa, and wearing the attire of Vaishnav, Tilak, and so on, all these things are really extremely important to help create or help us to develop this understanding of my real identity and free us from false identity. The problem is we're still thinking I'm this body. I am a man, I'm a woman, because we have to act according to the karmic form which we've received, etc. But this, this is not our real identity. All the education which we've accumulated in this world and the various relationships which we have in this world are just temporary they say reflections of reality of, of our identity. They're not our real identity. It's our false identity. Thinking I am an Australian, I'm an Indian, I'm a Brahmin, I'm this, and I'm a that. This is definitely just a description of your present stage in the cycle of you know, samsara in this world. Next lifetime, we may be born in a different form with a different everything. We may not even be a human form. And then we think I'm a dog, I'm a bird, I'm whatever it is. Or we may be in a human form. This life, we may be identifying ourselves being a Hindu or a Christian. These are also false identities. They may be useful to realize our real identity, but they're not our real identity. We're not eternally Hindu or Buddhist or Christian or atheist or Muslim or any of these may be useful to help realize it. But unless we have the ultimate goal, knowledge of our understanding of our ultimate goal in mind, we can get stuck at whatever level we're on. And that creates, because then we remain in a situation, let's say, of acting according to our conditional concept how we see ourselves and we get upset with people who have a different situation and see it differently and so on and so forth. And we become you know, implicated in duality. So to get free of all this um, process, Prabhupada has given this stage by stage. And it's supposed to be to help free us from this, not just to establish us in it. Religion is generally to make people in this material world pious, more comfortable in this world, um, better situated, etc. in this world. Spirituality is to get out of this material conception of life entirely, of me and mine, false identity, etc. So all these things introduced by Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj's first initiation was basically not there before. You do not see any mention of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu giving first and second initiation. We see disciple, but that means they're simply following the Lord Chaitanya's path of Sankirtan. This is the, the process. Lord Chaitanya didn't, this is why these verses are there. Then just chant Hare Krishna. It has to be done properly. So for the sake of the Kali Yuga, the necessity of the candidates, the preaching of Krishna consciousness, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj started a preaching movement. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was not even second initiated, he said. or if he was, he wasn't wearing the thread. It wasn't important. The main thing was the, there's two paths here, Bhagavat Mark and Pancharatrika Mark. So primarily the emphasis is on Bhagavat Mark. But the importance of Pancharatrika or the you could say the arching of the worship and all these other necessary rules and regulations. So important to protect the aspiring devotee from re referring again to our false intelligence or our attachments in this world of how we think sh things should be, what I want it to be, how I see it, etc. So all these rules and regulations are there to help to uh, let's say, change that way we see things. And although it, we may not see things from the ultimate perspective of the absolute, but by following these principles, any society has certain regulations in it, even every society in the world has. But these are these principles which we try to follow, regulated principles, what are they for? They are for remembering. Uh, what is that for? Smart of your fishing. 
I forgot. So to, uh, to always remember Krishna, never forget him. This is the purpose of all of the rules and regulations. They're not to, they're, they're, that's what they're for. They should facilitate this relationship with Krishna. Deity worship, for instance, how wonderful. What a wonderful service. Cooking for the deities. What a, we can imagine what a privilege this is. We sometimes think it's, oh, it's a burden. When we forget, you know, it's actually, this is the business of eternal, eternal business. Serving Krishna's senses, dressing him, decorating him, putting flowers on him, bringing flowers for his pleasure, growing food for his pleasure, looking after his cows, looking, keeping everything clean for his pleasure. This is the business of a little of the absolute, of the spiritual realm of Goloka Vrindavan. This is the business. This is our eternal business, whatever detail it may be, but this is our business. Worshipping the deity is, is, it awakens this. We don't even notice it. We might think, oh God, I've got to get up in the morning. Oh no. Oh my goodness, they're on the altar as well. I really wish I didn't, I chose the wrong day. Oh my goodness, why are they late? You know, it's like so many thoughts going through our mind due to our whatever, our conditioning. <laughs> we have to put Krishna in the center, remember Krishna. Remembering the pur our purpose is to please him. And, and what a wonderful opportunity to dress the deity, to offer arti to Radhago Kulananda. How wonderful this is. It's not a burden, it's a relief. It's a great relief. We may not see it like that because we're still attached to our conditioning. But by, you know, reminding each other what is important to hear, it's important to chant regularly around and hear the sound of the holy name and to hear the Bhagavatam. They got to go on side by side, the two rails of the, the track. Prabhupada said two rails on a railway track must be there. One is not enough. They've got to go on together, the train to progress nicely. Even if one's not going on the altar, the worship of the deity or the principle of the worship of the Lord in that sense is most important. And that is accompanied by certain principles, cleanliness, austerity, mercy, and truthfulness. These are generally the, the four pillars of Brahminical life. There, you can read in the Bhagavad Gita 18th chapter verses whatever, 44 or something. The, there's qualities of a Brahmin. You can read more about it in the 11th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, the 7th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. Narada Muni is explaining more about the, uh, you know, the responsibilities of a Brahmin and so on and so forth. But primarily, truthfulness, mercy, cleanliness, Prabhupada said, cleanliness. So daily worship is a lot of it centered around cleanliness, austerity, regulation. You know, it's, it's, it's helping us in de developing this mood of pleasing Krishna, remembering Krishna, thinking, oh, what, well, I've got what color flowers I need to get for the deity because they're wearing blue and yellow outfits or whatever. You know, meditating on the, on, on the Lord's pleasure. It's such a wonderful, let's uh, say, opportunity for us uh, conditioned fallen souls and if we try to do it in a direction or uh, that's why guidelines are there the pure devotee of the lord who is actually living for krishna's pleasure Srila Prabhupada, is giving us these directions or he's referring us to where we can get these directions so we can apply them in our lives now oh, i don't agree with that i don't think we should do this i don't think we should do it like this who cares what we think is what krishna thinks that counts and we hear that from the pure devotee of the Lord. So it's not, the, there's called uh, the regulated principles of freedom. Or Pantano in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, the regulated principles. It looks like we're being bound up. Rules and regulations, timings, this thing, that. But it's actually freeing us from our conditioning, freeing us from our falsities, freeing us from our false egos, <laughs> the root of it all. Our false ego, 
It's, 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 <laughs> there's no condition soul is not affected by that in this whole universe, even up to the point of total pure, total, when we ever come to the purest platform beyond any kind of influence with, okay, there's no false ego, but up to that, there's always an element of that false ego. We're not necessarily following it, but it's still there. <laughs> pinprick a little bit, maybe, maybe more than a pinprick, but it's still there. So to re release us from this, whatever our condition is, it's so important to follow um, as best we can. You know, we make mistakes. We are not up to the mark, but we try. We don't disrespect it. We just try to do our best to follow the guidelines given by the shastras, gurus, and sadhus to release us from this material, not to establish ourselves in a position in this world where people respect us. That's not what Lord Chaitanya taught. A man in Amanadena Kirtaniya Sadari said, without asking any respect and giving all respect to others. His principles become humble, more than a straw in the street, more tolerant than a tree. So our time is flying by, and I want to... What time do we have to finish? 15 minutes. Huh? 15 minutes. Is it 8 o'clock? Yes. 20 minutes, isn't it? 8.20? Uh, let me say like... 20 8, past. 6.20, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6.20. 20. Okay, so I'll just go on a little bit of words. A few more things. I'll just read one or two more. In other words, the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is so powerful that it does not depend on official initiation or the second initiation. But if one is initiated, second initiated, Brahman initiated, and engages in Pancharatra Vidhi, deity worship, his Krishna consciousness will awaken very soon. It really helps. Prabhupada describes Jiva Goswami says, it's like a little wheel inside a big wheel. It helps to lubricate and speed it up. It's an assistance if we take advantage of it. The more one is freed, uh, excuse me, will awaken very soon, and his identification with the material world will be vanquished. The more one is freed from material identification, the more one can realize that the spirit soul is qualitatively as good as the supreme soul. Qualitatively, not quantity, quality. At such a time when one is situated on the absolute platform, he can understand that the holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself are identical. Otherwise, we're chanting, chanting, but we're, we're seeing the name and Krishna, two separate things. We're seeing it as a means to attain Krishna. That's not bad, but it's not complete. The name is Krishna in full. So that is a realization. It's not just a serious theoretical or philosophical application, which may be there to remind us, but this... The perfection is when it's a realization. And deity worship really helps one, or the, the principle of, uh, of worshiping the deity wherever we are by following the principles is very important or very helpful in us in coming to that realization. Without it, it's possible, of course, but it's very helpful. One should therefore be initiated properly according to the revealed scriptures under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master. Although chanting the holy name is good for both conditioned and liberated souls, it is especially beneficial to the conditioned soul because by chanting it, one is liberated. When a person who chants the holy name is liberated, he attains the ultimate perfection by returning back home, back to Godhead. Yes, right. many verses in that regards. Um, and probably I'll finish off. The offenseless chanting of the holy name does not depend on the initiation process offenseless chanting. Although initiation may depend on Purusharya or Purusharan, that means when he says initiation is referring to Brahman initiation, the actual chanting of the holy name does not depend on Purusharya Vidhi or the regulated principles. Anyone can chant anywhere, anytime. There are no hard and fast rules for chanting. But if we want to become to the platform of pure Shudanam, <laughs> There are some rules and regulations. Of course, if one's heart is completely surrendered, automatically they're, they're there. You're not going to commit offense to anyone. But we're not probably on that platform. If one chants the holy name without committing an offense, he attains all success. During the chanting of the holy name, the tongue must work. Simply by chanting the holy name, one is immediately delivered. The tongue is Sevan Mukajiva. It is controlled by service. One whose tongue is engaged in tasting material things 
also talking about them cannot use the tongue for absolute realization. That's like another topic. I won't get onto that today. But to realize Krishna, the senses have to become purified. All of our senses, mind purified. Tukshri Krishna Namadi Namavad Vayam Indrai Sevan Mukhi Jiva Do Svayam Eva Svarachiraha. We can't realize Krishna with mundane or conditioned senses. The senses, the mind, our consciousness has to become purified. Krishna then automatically reveals himself. He doesn't reveal himself in a dirty consciousness. Just like we can't see clearly in a dirty water. Our consciousness is like that. Cleanse and then we can see what's there. The reality becomes visible. And now I'm going to read something, I think, from Sri Prabhupada. I don't know how much we can read. I, I haven't got much time. I recommend you read this section. It's in the Pancharatra, Pancharatra Padip. I hope you've got it there in New Goku. And this is the chapter Pancharatrika Vidhi and Bhagavat Vidhi. I'll just read one or two things. Sometimes neophyte devotees think that they can continue the Shravanam Kirtanam process without worshipping the deity. And this is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's a quote from the 19th chapter, text 152. But the execution of Shravana Kirtana is meant for highly developed devotees like Haridas Thakur, who engage in the Shravana Kirtana process without worshipping the deity. However, one should not falsely imitate Haridas Thakur and thus abandon deity worship just to try to engage in Shravana Kirtana. The two have to go on side by side. Now, deity worship may take different forms. It may, you know, even for the public in general, they can perform deity worship just by learning how to offer their obeisances properly or bringing a gift to the deity or giving a donation for the service of the deity or just appreciating the deity. This is also all forms of deity worship in a certain stage. We should, hopefully we can do more than that. Um, deity worship should be continued along with hearing and chanting. In all the mantras, there are specific potencies of which the rehasted devotees must take advantage. But if one chants the holy name of the Lord, he receives the result of chanting Namaha, deity mantras, many times. By chanting the holy name of the Lord, one can reach the platform of love of God. One might therefore ask when, what then is the necessity of being initiated, by which one receives deity mantras? The answer is that even though the chanting of the holy name is sufficient to enable one to progress in spiritual life, it, to the standard of love of God, one is nonetheless susceptible to contamination because of possessing a material body. Consequently, special stress is given to the Archana Vidhi. One should therefore regularly take advantage of both the Bhagavat process and the Pancharatika process. That's from the Srimad Bhagavatam. I think that's by Narada Muni, 7th Canto, Chapter 5 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I'll read another quote of Prabhupada now. I can't read in between this too many things. Um, Lord Narayan is worshipped by the Pancharatrika Vidhi or regulated principles, whereas Lord Krishna is worshipped by the Bhagavat Vidhi. No one can worship the Lord in the Bhagavat Vidhi without going through the regulations of the Pancharatrika Vidhi. And this is a little complex, so maybe you can't follow this. But Prabhupada actually said that our worship is the worship of the mood of Lakshmi. At this stage, Lakshmi Narayan Vaidhi Bhakti is in the mood, which we're following, of Lakshmi Narayan worship. Rules, regulations, reverence, and so on. And that, if we're following a devotee who's pure devotee of the Lord in the mood of devotional service to Radha Krishna, they're giving us Vaidhi Bhakti, Pancharatriki Vidhi. But if we follow that, according to that direction, it can lead to pure Raghunuga Bhakti or Bhagavat Vidhi, spontaneous love of God, where one's simply absorbed without even the think of rules. It, it, one's motive is love. It leads to that. You can't jump over it. You can't imagine that I'm on that level. I've reached that. I don't need Vidhi. We don't, I don't need to follow rules and regulations. I'll just chant. Okay. You can try. But unfortunately, we have so many samskaras, material samskaras, attachments to this world which interfere, or concepts which interfere with the growth of our love for Krishna, our selfless growth of devotional service. Prabhupada goes on to say, although there may be Radha Krishna Vigra, the worship of the neophyte devotee is acceptable as Lakshmi Narayan worship. Worship according to Pancharatrika Vidhi is called Vidhi Mark, 
and worship according to Bhagavad Vidhi is called Ragamarg. If we do not follow the regulated principles on the Vidhi Marg platform and keep our eyes and keep our eyes trained to spot offenses, we will not make we will not make progress. If we don't follow the principles, and you don't keep our eyes trained to spot offenses, proper rights in the purport, we will not make progress. Pretty simple, pretty clear. We can understand perhaps some of the reasons. So daily worship is so important in, for everyone in trying to, and daily worship comes in different forms. It might be a picture, it might be a panchatapa picture, but the principle of to directing our lives, our money, our life, our intelligence, our work, our senses, our family, for the pleasure of the deity is so important. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to finish. Yeah, and now I'm going to just read something else because our time is almost expired. Oh, we've got 10 minutes left. But this is another very nice quote from Srila Prabhupada. And this is, this is from, this is a purport from, oh, this is wonderful. This is from the Adi Lila, chapter seven. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took his initiation, and his initiation is there, although there's no specific, his initiation, there was no change of name. There was just a, a direction as to what to do. Lord Chaitanya took shelter of Ishwara Puri as his uh, initiating guru, you could say. So there, um, and it means he received the uh, sadhana from his guru and his guru, although Lord Chaitanya was known as Nimai Pandit at that time, he received the name Sri Krishna Chaitanya when he took sannyas. Nobody was calling him Krishna Chaitanya before that. He was known as Vishrambar, maybe Goranga, but not uh, Krishna Chaitanya. He was a uh, Nimai Pandit and Nimai and different names may have been there. But uh, when he received initiation, he received an instruction from Ishwar Puri that uh, Lord Chaitanya was known as a great scholar, very learned in Navadweep, defeating all the pandits, everything, <laughs> part of his pastime. So when he went to, to um, Gaya to take darshan of the lotus feet of Vishnu, his primary reason for going there was actually to take the association of Ishwar Puri, teaching a central principle of of devotional service, one has to receive the mantra from the parampara, disciplic succession, pure devotee of the Lord. Otherwise, the mantra will not reveal itself. Krishna will not reveal himself. One will only see it from a relative perspective. People can chant Hare Krishna. Okay, you can say something is there, but it will not reveal, the, the holy name will not reveal himself unless it's re received from the right source. So he went there to show that we must take the shelter of, of the parampara represented the parampara. So he went there, and Ishwara Puri said, you are a fool. Now imagine, he called Lord Chaitanya a fool. You will not be able to realize the absolute truth by study of the Vedas. No one can do that in this age, particularly. In this age of Kali, and he quoted the verse, he gave Lord Chaitanya, said, my spiritual master gave me one verse. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kolonas, Jevanas, Jevanas, Jeva, Gatiranyata. In this age of Kali, there is no other way, no other way, no other way, no other way, other than the chanting of the Holy Name, the chanting of the Holy Name, the chanting of the Holy Name. Right? Well, this was actually Lord Chaitanya speaking this verse in the seventh chapter of the Adi Lila to Prakashananda Saraswati in the Mayavadis in Varanasi. And Lord Chaitanya is quoting what happened and why he is always chanting the holy name. These Mayavadi sannyasi were thinking, you should be studying the Vedanta, you should be doing this and that. He said, no, just chant the holy name, my spiritual answer said. So let's see what Prabhupada says in the purpose to this. Uh, i just summarize. To chant the holy name, I'll read from this one section here. To chant the holy name of the Lord, one need not depend upon other paraphernalia. For one can immediately get all the desired results of linking with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It may therefore be questioned why there is necessity for initiation or further spiritual activities in devotional service for one who engages in the chanting of the Holy Name of the Lord. Why? If the Holy Name of the Lord is all that's needed and the only way. The answer, Prabhupada says, is that although it is correct, the one who fully engages in chanting the holy name 
need not depend upon the process of initiation or second initiation or even first initiation, officially speaking. Generally, a devotee is addicted to many abominable material habits due to material contamination from his previous life, which means either in this lifetime or previous lifetimes. And abominable material habits are not just external physical activities, but it refers to the subtle, it also refers to the subtle ideas that we have of whatever various types of ideas, conceptions, which we have in our heart which keep us rooted and keep, keep us in the unfortunate situation of liable to commit offenses towards other living entities, towards Vaishnavas or towards the holy name. Hmm. In order to get quick relief from all of these contaminations, it is required that one engage in the worship of the Lord in the temple. The worship of the deity in the temple is essential to reduce one's restlessness due to the contaminations of conditioned life. Have you ever noticed your mind being restless? Maybe when you sleep, you don't notice it. We go into deep ignorance. <laughs> but most of the time, the mind tends to easily get restless in various situations. Um, and we have to keep, you know, reminding ourselves and try to bring it back, but it gets easily restless. Why? Due to the contaminations of conditional life. That means past and present or dreaming of the future. Thus, Narada in his Pancharatrika Vidhi, Narada Muni compiled this Pancharatrika Vidhi, and then you see here, who is a better Bhagavat Vidhi than he, has compiled this Pancharatrika Vidhi, and other great sages have sometimes stressed that since every conditioned soul has a bodily concept of life aimed at sense enjoyment, to be, even in devotional services, is still there. I still want to be recognized. I still want to have pleasures. And it's natural in the conditioned state. It's still there. So um, to restrict this sense enjoyment, the rules and regulations for worshiping the deity in the temple are essential. Srila Rupa Goswami has described that the holy name of the Lord can be chanted by liberated souls, but purely, that is. But almost all the souls we have to initiate are conditioned. It is advised that when chant the holy name of the Lord without offenses and according to the regulated principles, yet due to their past bad habits, they violate these rules and regulations. And Prabhupada is referring to us. He's not talking about some <laughs> people out there. He's talking to us. Thus, the regulated principles for worship of the deity are also simultaneously essential. Hare Krishna. So I'm going to finish there. And I just hope that Hope and pray that this, um, this uh, say, step forward, which we're taking here today, will help you in your progress in spiritual lives and help you to cultivate a fenceless chanting of the holy name and free us from bodily identification, help to de develop genuine humility, tolerance, and respect within our consciousness and pleasing our spiritual masters and pleasing Krishna. And I pray that all the devotees there bless you, uh, that you may say take this to heart and progress nicely in your lives. Try to, you'll be receiving mantras. I'll talk about that later on um, after the yoga is completed, um, which Prabhupada has given us specific mantras, which are there to assist and to help control. And, as a general principle, the guide, the Brahma Gayatri Mantra specifically is uh, understood to help free us from this tendency for mental speculation, which we don't generally say as a, a regulated principle, it is in one sense, it is sometimes added there along with no meat eating and so on and so forth. This tendency to speculate based upon our conditioning from past and present situations is very strong let's say, cloudy effect in our consciousness it makes it very hard to progress in spiritual life. We're hanging on, basically, to whatever illusions we think are realities, etc. So to clear that, the Brahma Gayatri Mantra is also very, very important. And that's just a general understanding, nothing specific. Okay, well, I guess we better move along. Is that okay, Kalia? Anyone still there? Are you still there? Yeah, but they're mute. 
Oh, you are muted. Yes. Even if you are muted, you can still chant in your hearts. So are we ready? I think I've stayed to time. Thank you very much, Dhananda Maharaj, for a very enlightening class and all the wonderful quotations. The devotees have all been absorbing. absorbing so got, a little bit, nice. got a little bit technical there for, for those who are not familiar, but anyway, what to do? Sorry about that. There, now we have to do Achaman. The Achaman has to be performed now. And maybe the priest there can take us through the Achaman. What do you think? Yep, he's ready to do that. Now, I'd just like to mention, because oftentimes the priest doesn't mention the meaning um, before he goes into it. He'll be chanting one mantra, Oma Pavitra Pavitra Vasarvavastam Kutopi Vayachmet Pundarikaksham Sabayabhyantarak Shuchahi. He's going to chant that mantra, I presume. And this is a very um, clear mantra uh, from the Shastras, which describes that uh, whether one's in a pure condition or an impure condition, one who remembers the lotus feet of the Lord, or one who's absorbed in remembrance of the Lord, you could say, becomes cleansed within and without. So the purpose of our daily worship, the purpose of all of our activities is this, don't forget that. We're here to remember Krishna and not forget him. Always we help each other to remember that, putting Krishna in the center. This is the, the purpose of all the rules and regulations, to put Krishna in the center of our lives. I hope this will help you to put Krishna in the center of your lives, because both of you and all the devotees there are so sincere. I've known Toshin 27 years and all the difficulties and all the obstacles that come and go in our path stick sincerely to the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada, the holy name and devotional service. And Bhakti Mala also um, has you know, also has experienced challenges in your life for sure, but sincerely holding on to devotional service, a garland of devotional service holding on tightly, don't let go, difficulties come and go, but you hold on to the eternal, the holy name is eternal, just hold on to the holy name, your service is the most precious gem you have, hold on to that service, even if others, it doesn't mean a specific service necessary, but the principle of service, devotional service, this is our constitution, and we're getting an opportunity to, let's say, practice, Developed through Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, our constitutional nature, our raga, the raga mark. Raga mark is, is natural, spontaneous, which is nothing dependent upon material conditioning itself. It is the awakening of the soul's natural attraction to Krishna. And that will happen in due course of time if we hold on to the lotus feet of the spiritual master's instructions. Prabhupada said that's the living principle, it's the life and soul of a devotee. He said, my spiritual master's instructions are my life and soul. They're a thread holding us, keeping us in line so we can be pulled back to God. Hare Krishna. Shita Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh, glorious to all the devotees of New Gold Kool. And all, the, all the cows of New Gold Kool. You're so lucky I'm stuck here in a little apartment in the middle of Paris in a, what is known as arrandizement is like one of the roughest arrandizement in Paris. I'm in this little tiny apartment there with a wonderful devotee in the middle of Paris. That's why I have to be a little quiet because there are neighbors up, right, left, and center. And there you are in the transcendental abode of Goku. Hare Krishna, you're so fortunate. Thank you. Haribo, Jai Prabhupada. So I'll leave you now in peace. Is that okay? That's a suggestion. Master Kanan has another suggestion. Hare Krishna, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, potentially just to make things a bit easier for when Maharaj would like to speak to the devotees privately, um, we can keep this Zoom session running. Maharaj um, can feel free to take leave and carry on with some services in the meantime. And uh, after the Yagya is finished, um, all other devotees, please would ask you to leave the meeting. And then we will leave just Maharaj and the ISKCON new Gokul laptop um, 
which you can move to like a private office room so that Maharaj can then speak to the devotees privately. Does that sound okay? Then you won't have to like log in. And, yeah. And um, I've uh, Krishna, Krishna Kaliya Prabhu, I've sent you um, Maharaj's servant's um, details, Rohini Nandan Prabhu, just in case if there's any issues, then you can contact him directly. But we'll keep this Zoom meeting running just for the two groups, Jananda Maharaj and Iskwan Nugoko. Yeah, that's fine. The second under, I think that'll work. Okay. That should be okay. Thank you. As long as you keep your masks on. Especially when you do the ashraman. Especially when you do ashraman, you have to keep your mask on, is it? <laughs> and, and for the prasadam also. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you all very much. Thank you to uh, 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 Chincha, uh, Chincha Krishna. What's his name? Chincha Gora. Huh? A chincha rupa gora. A Prabhu. Thank you very much. Dandavat, Dandavat. And Kale Krishna Prabhu. All of us there. Hoshan Krishna Prabhu and Bhakti Mala. I'll see you a little while. Eh? Hare Krishna. You're offering your heart now in the fire of sacrifice, okay? All the false ego is now being going to be burnt up in the yajna. Okay? Hare Krishna. It'd be nice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh, Premanandi. Okay, I can leave now. Let's mute and cut the video, and when they're ready, they will. Yeah.